Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. And shout out to all of y'all. And if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't, that's fine too. But all the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I don't want to waste no more time. Let's just jump straight into it. First question came from my guy, Kenpachi. He said, yo, engraving Kenpachi. I just want to give you a true hypothetical to kind of get a break from reiterating all the losses and obstacles the Ravens have and have had to deal with this year. So he, he tired of the Ravens right now. He don't want to hear nothing about the Ravens. He don't want to talk nothing about the Ravens. He just tired. And I don't blame you. But anyway, he said, my question is, do you think John Harbaugh could break the Detroit curse? I'm a Ravens fan through and through, but I can't help but ponder these type of scenarios. Thanks for being my number one source. Of all things Ravens. So could John Harbaugh break the Detroit curse? And oh, what does that mean? Like get Detroit to what a winning record? Have them as a winning team? That would depend on the weapons. John Harbaugh, he could sure make them fight. Like fight hard and, and, and give it their all. But could he break it, so to speak? It would just, it would literally depend on everything around him. It would depend on everything around him. And it would take that much more. Uh, for him to really be successful with the Lions because we know like it's it's been a big yikes over there for a long time like I, I feel bad for Lions fans man they like man they just been going through it for the longest man for the longest um so I don't know next question came from my guy Connor he said good morning how are you this season has been up and down but this offseason what do you think the Ravens will focus on uh, I personally think that because uh, Lamar got hurt, offensive line is the number one priority. Uh, so the Ravens focus going into this offseason, um, obviously to get healthy. But, yeah, it, it, it has to be offensive line. It has to be. Yeah, you got some guys departing on the defense, which is very important. You got to replace them. But offense, on offense, you pretty much, as long as some guys get back healthy, you're pretty much set. As far as weapons and stuff, of course, you could add another tight end. Um, you could add a uh, an offensive line, man, for real. That's yeah. So I, I I agree. I think it would that it would be that it would have to be that because you need to protect your franchise quarterback. You need to make sure there's a unit around him, and it's like ain't nobody getting through. I don't care. Um, and as far as what they need to do to protect him. If Bradley Bozeman comes back, great. If he doesn't, okay. Um, Tristan Colon Castillo will be my vote for for center. Uh, but as far as the other offensive linemen, Kevin Zeitler, he'll be back. Ronnie Stanley, you hope that he'll be back 100%. Uh, anything from Jawan James is a bonus, but they need to get nasty up front. They need to get na they need to get some offensive linemen that are nasty, that are just hardcore, that are just not nice you, you you like you need to get some guys that is just rough man because i feel like this offensive line they they just they're too nice <laughs> they're too nice like and they got to get guys that are gonna protect lamar like some ryan jensen types remember when flacco got popped by kiko alonzo who was the only person that came to flacco's defense it was his center that was it that was it his center so you need to get nasty uh, on the offensive line. So, yes, I would agree with you. Their number one priority uh, next season should be bulking up that offensive line and really trying to build that bully that they talked about so long ago. Next question came from Ravens Flock. Not from everybody, but his name is Ravens Flock. Anyway, he said, what's good engraving? We need a new offensive coordinator from the top offenses in the league, like a QB coach who learned from Reed, McVay, or something. I remember when people tried to tell me we need to get rid of Lamar Jackson because we had all these close losses and moral victories without him. I'll take an ugly win with LJ any day than a close loss. Uh, yes, for sure. Um, Chiefs, I know Eric bien ain't coming here. We know that. that it's not happening. But they are uh, they a QB coach. He obviously doing something right over there uh, with Patrick Mahomes and them. And even when Patrick Mahomes was out, they were still making some stuff happen. Uh, so the QB coach from over there uh, is it Kafka? I don't remember who it is. But anyway, whoever it is, he I wouldn't mind that. Um, but I just don't think Ravens would do that. I, I think they would uh, if they moved on from Greg Roman, which I don't expect them to at all. 
Um, I think they will go in the uh, direction of James Urban. I know T. Martin is somebody that a lot of us have spoken about and a lot of us would love because he's he's some new blood on this Ravens team. And it feels like they just need an injection of life on this offense. But I don't think that they would even look in his direction. He may get like a new title or something like that, but I, I think they will go to James Urban uh, before they went to him. Next question came from my guy Desmond. He said, what's up in Graven? Let me first shout out the whole team, keep it clean, and Ravens players who stepped up during this rough season. Now that I got that out the way, uh, this is right after the game, so I may have angry fingers, but we, <laughs> but we need major changes to the sideline. I could easily say fire Giro, but what will that change? Exactly. Uh, Harbaugh is great. Is a great coach, but the hood Harbaugh effect will hurt us. He does nothing but hire a washed up coach. My opinion: hire Eric Bieniemy and give T. Martin the offensive coordinator position. Come on, man! Third and two, and Giro calls a QB draw. I hear people saying fire Wink. I disagree. He noticed his mistakes and adjusted. The defense did good down the stretch, but had no help from the offense. The more that they are on the field, the more mistakes that they make. Sorry for the long message. No, 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 no. Don't apologize for this at all, my friend. Please don't. But yeah, the 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 yeah, we talk about Hood Harbor all the time. And we love that he loves his people. We love that he puts his people on. Well, we love that he's willing to do that for people. It, the way that it affects the Ravens is not best for business. Um because it, it 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 makes you hire friends and you're like, "Oh, let me hire my buddy. My my guy needs a job. I I know my guy can do this, but can he do it the best? Is he the best man for the job or the best guy?" Who won't threaten your job anyway um as far as wink wink is something that's very tricky because it, it's crazy with with, with wink and, and Harbaugh does this too sometimes but with wink it's like when all of his players are there when he has his guys even most of his guys the coaching decisions are like huh what what's going on but then when he's like down to nothing, that's when he he made the adjustments and he like, oh, you know what? Maybe I need to I need to dial it back a little bit. Maybe I do. Maybe I need to maybe I need to cheer a little bit. Maybe I need to stop leaving these guys on islands and stuff like that. But okay. When he was down to his last. So he did adjust, but it's almost like he was like he was forced to. Like he he wanted to keep eating at these fancy restaurants, but he ain't had the money to do it. So he had to adjust to the situation. Like, he was forced to adjust to the situation. Because if he tried to go to those fancy, expensive restaurants with no money, he ain't gonna get no food. He ain't gonna get no food. So the same way when, when he was stripped of literally everything and everybody, then it was like, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe I do need to fix this. So I just wonder how things will be when everybody's back. Will he go back to the same old stuff? And then even and, and I understand, oh, yeah, if your players are out, you, you the stuff ain't going to work the same. But what if it's not working with the players that you're supposed to have? Are you still going to keep doing it over and over? Because we know Wink is Wink. Wink is Wink. And, and he got his M.O. like, hey, I'm about to blitz you. I don't care. I don't care if I got my starters. I don't care if I got my backups. I don't care. I'm blitzing you and I'm blitzing you like crazy. So I just wonder, my, my concern is, if it's not working, will he adjust when everybody's back? Will he still adjust when everybody's back? Because he did this year down the stretch, but will that be consistent? Next question came from my guy, Eric. He said, hey, how's it going? My question is, do you think that a lot of times the Ravens rely on Justin Tucker a little too much by him being one of the greatest kickers of all time? No, I, I do not. Man, we saw that in the, uh, the, the, those stretcher games, those stretcher, those six games, and a lot of those where they could have opted for overtime and be like, hey, we got Justin Tucker. We kicked this field goal. We kicked this point after touchdown. We just let's play for overtime and even hey what what if we get the ball back first in overtime we kick a, a field goal or we we go ahead we, we do something but they no they don't they they do not they I, I feel like they don't rely on justin tucker enough in a lot of those crucial clutch situations and there have been times this year when they've been in field goal range but they say oh no 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 let, let's punt the ball let's go ahead and punt it and you know Justin Tucker be ready, man. That dude is always ready. He, he's the definition of stay ready, so you ain't got to get ready. Um, now, I do feel like over the years, they've had to rely on him. And, and if he was on so many other teams, then he would not be the greatest kicker uh, of all time. Because other teams would have been scoring a lot more touchdowns uh, than field goals. But we know over the years, um, there were a lot of games 
where Justin Tucker had to trot on out there and kick a bunch of field goals. So had he been with a lot of other teams that scored a lot more touchdowns than the Ravens over the years, then he wouldn't be considered the greatest. Now, that ain't no new news or anything like that. We've been said that. Um, but he, I mean, he would still be a really good kicker, but he wouldn't have been known as the greatest because Ravens, like, they had got him, or well, they used to have him out there all the time, all the time, all the time. But now they're like, oh, yeah, not so much. No, yeah. Go for two. Next question came from Raynell. He said, so the QB controversy just died this night after the Steelers game. One and six record and Huntley passed for three touchdowns and four interceptions. It's all right, but he could have done more. Bateman is always open and nothing goes his way. Uh, seems like Mandrews earned his QB's trust so much that they throw him the ball every time. Good game, Ravens. I heard Vikings head coach is available. <laughs> Vic Fangio for D.C. Oh, he ain't coming back here. Not under Hubbard's watch. Uh, anyone not named Roman will do uh, for offensive coordinator, especially those QB runs on third downs need to go. Hey, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even though um, they, they were working... Uh, what what game? Was it the Steelers game or the game before? In the Rams game, I think. They 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 were working and I was like, oh wow. Uh y'all know I'm still not a fan of those the QB runs. Um the design ones. If a QB takes off, all right, cool. But the design uh, and the, the way that the Ravens design a lot of them is just so bad. Um but yeah, man, you you said a, a, a mouthful and I don't even need to follow up. You, you, you done said everything. Next question came from Grady. He said, Hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and your fam. I just want to get your initial thought uh, process regarding free agency. With around 26 to 27 million cap space without restructures or cuts, we have these key players set to hit the market. Bozeman, Elliott, Averitt, uh, Ricard, Watkins, Campbell, Brandon Williams, Justin Houston, Jimmy Smith, Latavius Murray, Josh Bynes, Pernell McPhee, Devontae Freeman, etc. You, you could have probably put the etc. way before and that would have covered a lot of these people too. But anyway, he said, it's pretty obvious we won't be able to retain all of these players. However, I was wondering if you could give me your initial must keeps out of the bunch. Uh, must keeps? None. Um, for me personally, it's Campbell, Bynes, Bozeman, Ricard, and Houston. I don't care much for the others. Thank you for your time. And as always, go Ravens. Who would be the must keeps out of this list? I would say... Yeah, yeah, really nobody. I, I, I will guys, I will have some some light to keep some guys that I would like to stay, uh, like a Calais Campbell. Um, if he's all the way in it, if if Calais Campbell's like, if he's like, oh man, uh, I want to retire. Oh man, maybe I don't want to. Then no. If he ain't gonna be all the way in it, then no. Because you don't want somebody who's not all the way there. If 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 he's all the way there and he's with it, and I know he said it before the season was over in that presser with him and Jimmy Smith, but. Give him some time and, and, and really let him decide. Because uh, things change. Situations change. Opinions change. How you think changes. Um, so if he was all in it, I, okay, cool. Um, Bradley Bozeman would love to keep him. I don't feel like it's an absolute must. But it would, it would be great because it, it would give you continuity along the offensive line. But I don't feel like it's the end-all, be-all. I would much rather him be here than for him to walk. But if he walks, I understand because he's trying to get his bread. He is trying to get paid. And he will get paid a nice dollar on the open market. Um, Deshaun Elliott. Uh, again, I, I would bring all these guys back as far as depth. Uh, Sammy Watkins is gone, though. Pat Ricard. No, I would say gone, too. Um, as far as me. For the Ravens, I could see them bringing him back in, and but that would have such a big impact on what the Ravens' offense does because you know Pat Ricard, that that's a slot wide receiver. Uh, they be having him out there, and it's just like, come on, y'all, what 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 are we doing? So um, but yeah, as far as like, again, must keep guys. Nah, and well, well, right now I feel like Justin Houston, he's somebody that I feel like would. Uh, not necessarily have to come back, but I think they'll bring him back, especially with Tyus Bowser's injury uh, coming at like literally the worst time. Even though, I mean, an injuries are always bad, but it came at the worst time uh, right at the last game of the season. So I think that almost forces them to, to bring back Justin Houston. Um, and Josh Bynes, I feel like it's good. It, I, I mean, I hope it's not the same thing over again, but. It's like if if it, if it's just gonna be Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison again, then you almost feel like Josh Bynes is gonna end up being back. Um, it just depends on what they do at inside linebacker this off season. 
Because that's a position that I don't think we're talking about enough. I don't think we're talking about enough because Patrick Queen, they're not just going to go with Patrick Queen. They're not. They're not going to have him be their guy. They're not going to have him be the end all be all inside linebacker. You just know. Um, so depending on what they do there, if they're active at inside linebacker, that's one thing. But if they're not, then Josh Bynes will be back. Next question came from Caden. He said, I ain't grave and hope everything is well with the season now over and the Dolphins realizing that Brian Flores or releasing Brian Flores. He put realizing, but he meant releasing. So anyway, he said, do you think that we let go Wink and get Flores? No, I don't think they will let go any coordinators. Um, I think they're just going to give everybody a pass. But anyway, he said, in my opinion, he did a great job at coaching the linebackers uh, with the Pats. Uh, do you think it will be great for Queen and all the other linebackers? Thanks. It could be. It could be. I mean, hey, he, he sure know how to stop Ravens offense. But, I mean, Ravens offense, they knew how to stop Ravens offense. Um, but, no, I just I don't see this one happening at all. Them letting go of Wink and bringing in Brian Flores. No, especially Brian Flores. He's trying to get a head coaching job. So, if, if all the other head coaching jobs got filled up and he just wasn't getting any opportunity there, I, I still don't think it would happen. But that would be the point where I think he would consider taking a coordinator role. But you, you try to go, you try to aim for the top first. You don't want to just get fired as a head coach and be like, all right, coordinator time. No, you want to try to get a head coaching job, especially if you want, went, what, seven and one down the stretch or eight and one down the stretch, whatever it was, you trying to get a head coaching job. And then if nothing works out, then you consider other stuff. But Brian Flores to the Ravens, no. Now, on the flip side, we got a question from Falu. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and your family. I had a question for you. If we were to part ways with Craig Roman, would you be open to hiring Brian Flores as our offensive coordinator? Oh, for him, so for him completely like flipping sides of the ball, because I'm pretty sure he's a defensive guy. Um, so, no, I, I just, no, I, 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 that would be something. Well, teams wouldn't know what to expect. We might have linebackers out there running goal routes or something like that. Or we may have a defensive end running a slant. I, but, no, I, I don't, no. Next question came from my guy Chase. He said, I ain't great. I hope this question finds you. Your family and all the team keep it clean well. Appreciate that. Uh, do you think that the, with the performance of Tyler Huntley in the Steelers game, that his stock may have dropped to the point that the Ravens won't get any decent offers? Uh, every draft report I saw talks about it not being a very not being a very talented QB draft class. So I know that that may help slightly. But what do you think the Ravens would be willing to accept as a minimum to trade Huntley? Do you think that the Ravens will keep him around for another year, or will he be like the end of your videos and be out? <laughs> Best wishes to you <laughs> and yours. Um, I don't think the Ravens are actually allowed to trade Huntley. I I'm not sure, but I, I don't think they are allowed to. Um, I got to double check on the whole exclusive rights free agent thing, but I think he has to stay regardless. But so he ain't going nowhere. Um, he is his salary is like seven hundred fifty thousand, something like that. It's something crazy cheap. Um, and he's a backup quarterback, and you know he can come in and, and he can play. He is not Lamar Jackson, no. But I don't think people expect him to be Lamar Jackson. Um, but for him being so cheap. Um, and him being reliable, uh, like, you, I mean, you would hope that they would have won some more games with him in there. But, I mean, we know the rest of the story. Um, but, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, now, as far as his stock, um, I think it's at, it's, it's at a, it was at a weird spot. Now, again, I don't think he's getting traded. It'd be nice. I, I would love him to get a shot somewhere. But I don't think it happens. But as far as his stock, it, it's, it's at like a weird place. Because he made some stuff happen, but his struggles with zip on the ball and with the deep ball, I think that would have some people concerned. So it's like, I feel like his stock right now will sort of be in limbo, but he'll be a Raven next year. Next question came from Gold Morano. He said, best linebacker in the AFC, huh? And Graven, we both watched every game this year. I would like to know if our eyes are seeing the same thing. Mike Tomlin made the comment that Patrick Queen is the best linebacker in the AFC North. Why would the best linebacker in the North be a weak side linebacker? This is by no means a bashing session. I appreciate Queen and his efforts, but unless I'm imagining things, I watch Patrick Queen get run over by tight ends and running backs all year. Could Mike Tomlin be using his words as a way to prevent the Ravens from drafting a linebacker in the early rounds? Uh, could there be a linebacker that they are worried may be scooped up by the Ravens who, who, who draft way ahead of them? 
Uh, am I alone in my thoughts that Patrick Queen will best serve the Ravens as a strong safety? I saw somebody else say that before, too. I understand he's only 22, but a player has to grow up quickly in this league. I see Queen being a safety. His size, build, and speed could prove uh, to make the linebacker just what we need in the secondary. Am I judging Queen too harshly? No, this, um, this actually wasn't harsh at all. Because uh, I have seen some people, the way that they speak, not only about Patrick Queen, but the way that they speak about players, they can just be outright disrespectful. Uh, and it's a shame to see. If, if a player struggles at something, we know we get it. But the way that you speak about somebody, it says a lot about you and your level of respect. I am not even talking about you. I mean, yeah, it does say something about you, Go Morano, because you spoke about what he struggles with, but you spoke about it respectfully. So we could tell that you have respect, but not everybody does that. And it's a shame when you see stuff like that. But anyway, I know we're getting sidetracked. Um, I, I think this was, I think this is mind games. I think that's uh, Tomlin playing mind games. Maybe he's, maybe he's trying to recruit Patrick Queen for the future. Maybe he's like, hey, man, this dude, best linebacker in the AFC North. Man. Hey, Ravens don't pick up that fifth-year option, big dog. Hey, you, you know where to find me. You know where to find You always have a place. Whatever team I'm on, if I ain't with the Steelers no more, you always have a place. Or it could, it could be them. I think it's just mind games, really. I think it is um, because, you know, Patrick Queen, Patrick Queen got, he got potential. He got potential. He just, he got to clean up some, he got to clean up the fundamental stuff. That's it. That's it. He got to clean up. The, and, and the main thing is tackling. The arm tackles and, and just wrapping up. Um, he he got to clean up the fundamental stuff. He got the burst. Um, sometimes he struggles getting off them offensive linemen. But um, he got the burst. He certainly does. Um, and he he makes some flashy plays sometimes, but even in the Steelers game, there was a like the play where he where he timed the snap perfectly, was in the backfield, but he missed the tackle. He like over pursued it uh, and just missed it. Thank goodness he he started the the breakup of the play because I forgot who ended up making the tackle in the backfield. But um, so he he's got the he's he, he's got so much potential, but um he hasn't got to get there yet. Um. But, yeah, as far as this, it, I think it could be, too, that, again, just mind games. Because there could be somebody in free agency who the Steelers may be thinking, oh, man, the Ravens, they, they trying to get him. You know what? Let's do everything that we can, even though it would be tough. Let's try to build this guy, Patrick Queen, up. Let's try to put it out there to the media. Because we know Ravens, they love listening to the media. And stuff that the media says affects the Ravens so much. So let's put this out there to the media. All right, Patrick Queen, best linebacker in the AFC North. And let's see how they run with it. Next question came from my guy Paolo. He said, uh, do you think that most of the defensive line would take pay cuts to be back with the team? Well, they're all free agents, so they wouldn't even have to take pay cuts, but they would just have to take uh, a lower deal, a cheaper deal, if they really wanted to be back that much. Um, but mm, not if they get better offers somewhere else because money talks and it's like yeah hey you love to come back to the ravens they gave you a shot they traded for you or they drafted you or they signed you in free agency great team great organization but money talks it really does um well except for justin houston because i think the offer that he got from pittsburgh was higher than the one that he got from the ravens i believe uh, oh remember when pittsburgh signed um ingram melvin ingram and then they were like man this ain't working out and they cut him, and the Chiefs picked him up, and, and look how they're doing now. Just something I thought about. Um, but he said, would it be good to have those defensive linemen back on the team? Since Tyler Bowser will be out most of next season, uh, who could be a good replacement? Sorry for the combo questions. Love the content. No, it's all good. I mean, don't apologize. Um, but, yeah, as far as Williams and Houston, Campbell, they, they, it's, it's possible. But as far as if it's significantly lower money, um, then I, I just I don't think they will be back. And again, we're, we're, like I was talking about earlier with, with Calais Campbell, it just all depends on where his head is at in the game. Uh, with Houston, though, with Houston, I, th I think that he has the highest chance of all three of them uh, to come back, especially because because of the, the the situation with Tyus Bowser. Um, and he said, "Oh yeah, since Tyus Bowser will be out most of next season, I, I don't know if it's going to be most of next season, but we'll see. We I just don't know. But who would be a good replacement?" Mm, yeah, it would have to be uh, Houston, Houston, and um, Houston in Oway, and Oway. I forgot about Oway. He was dealing with an injury to the end of the season too. Not, uh, hopefully, not a serious one, but he was dealing with something. I don't even remember what it was. But yeah, I, I would feel like the outside linebackers would have to be Houston in Oway.